Hey, welcome to another week of the uh, the Rourke Mix. And this week we um, we had Jennifer Robertson on, and uh, we know her in Canada from lots of comedy shows and sketches, and she's written for a lot of comedy, and uh, uh, she's been a funny woman her entire life. And uh, I think the world knows her from Schitt's Creek, where she played Jocelyn. And, um, and then after that, uh, she landed a great role in Ginny and Georgia. So um, this is a fun chat. So um, sit back and, and, um, and enjoy. Um, so I want to know, uh, this show is all about mixtapes and we're going to make you a mixtape mm -hmm. at the end, but how big of a part uh, uh, were mixtapes in your life? Like, did, do you remember that first time you made one or was there a significant one that came your way or went the other way? My friends made them for me because I was a total, like, I started grade eight and I still like the Muppets. Like I just didn't, it was not, it, cool. and I did not know. And suddenly I had these friends and they were like, this is what you should be listening to. I never had a boy make me a mixtape. Never. Never. Whoa. In grade 12, someone called me once and played um, a new edition song, You Better Cool It Now, and then hung up. <laughs> and I think it was like a boy who had a crush on me, just like played the song into the phone and then hung up. That's as close as I got. Oh my God, because my as soon as you said that, I'm like, you better cool it now. And he hung up, I'm like, were you psycho girl? No, <laughs> it was like, because that song's all about like, my friends are all like, know that I like you and I don't know, yeah. maybe it was, maybe I misinterpreted <laughs> that whole call. I was like, someone likes me instead of someone wants a restraining order. The song <laughs> says, ooh, watch out, you're gonna lose control. <sighs> Guys. Wow. We're, That's a, yeah. That was a serious laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but cool no one saved from boys, only from friends. Wow. Um, no. Well, now you went, you know, I, I kind of laughed because you're like, until grade eight, because until that time you were living on the island, Salt Spring Island girls. So there was uh, not much going on there culturally wise, musically wise for you. <laughs> I was, we were in Burnaby by the time I was, I did grade six and seven in Burnaby. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of exposure <laughs> on Salt Spring <laughs> Island. I mean, there isn't even a movie theater. So oh, my bed. yeah, there's a lot of a lot of British Army retirees at that point, probably. Yeah, and they no. weren't very hip to the latest no craze. No, <laughs> a lot of trumpet. A trumpet. lot of marching bands. Yes. music. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I think I was just I was just young. I was just young when I started high school, and I needed my friends to sort of sherpa me through music. Yeah. <laughs> so. so which kind of leads into the next question of, uh, you know, I want to know what that first band or that first song or, you know, really the band that you're like, oh, this is my band, but I bet it was probably introduced by your friends and you're like, oh, they like this. So I'm going to, I'm going to latch onto this. Yeah. Well, I, I hung out with sort of not my core group of friends were not extremely punk, but we hung out on the weekends with a lot of like serious punk kids and so we go to new west to now it's a comedy club what did it used to be called and you'd Oof, slam and you'd, there'd be a lot of slamming and taking people to like royal columbian for stitches and like <laughs> but it felt really rebellious so the cure was absolutely my first my first thing and when i said to my mom i needed to go and buy this cassette called killing an arab she was like what <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me, young lady. I was like, yeah, that's right. I'm going to buy this with my own money. And it's very controversial and I don't care. <laughs> so I'm thinking you weren't getting many musical cues from your mom if she didn't. Okay. Uh, yeah. My mom liked Emmy Lou Harris. I mean, not bad. Emmy Lou Harris, Neil sure. Diamond. I have very early childhood memories of my brother and I just running in circles in our living room to Neil Diamond. Like they come into America. <laughs> we were just like these toddlers just running because it was an inspiring song. You gotta run. Absolutely. Your body when you hear Neil Diamond. Were you wearing were you wearing sequin jumpsuits like Neil did? <laughs> I wore corduroy pantsuits until I was nine. 
nothing but different colored corduroy pantsuits that my mother handmade. That's Thank all you. I wear now. <laughs> That's all you wear? They're Imagine how snug they are. It's <laughs> awful. <laughs> all about fashion, guys. But the cure, then it was like into that sort of scene. My first concert without a parent, my first actual concert was the Beach Boys with my dad. Then my first non-parent concert was the Psychedelic Furs. They played at Expo 86. Yeah, so I saw, it. saw them. And that was sort of the foray into all of those bands. We saw the first Lollapalooza just outside really? of Seattle, the very first one. James how, how, old, how old would you have been then to get to Seattle and see Lollapalooza? Seven, 17. Okay, yeah. Uh, all right. It wasn't like you weren't going across the border at 15 and no, no. <laughs> hanging out Lala Palooza. Yeah. Senior, senior year high school. Yeah. You've already made some exceptional life choices. I have. At 17. 17. Come on. Come on. So <laughs> of those bands, of those bands you mentioned, like Psychedelic Cures, Cure, um, and then you know, Lollapalooza, a bit of a harder edge. Um, yeah. Which bands do you kind of hang on to today? Are you still like, oh, I still really like them? Or is, are you pretty easy going? Do you like all of them? Or some of them you're like, oh, I can't believe I like that. Some of them I find, I had a deep, deep rooted love for Eurasia, but it doesn't really stand up. I think if it remixed, it all just sounds incredibly hollow now. Yeah. <laughs> but at the time, I loved them. But I think, the Cure, I will forever love The Cure. Um, I will forever love Jane's Addiction. You know, then we got into Nirvana. Like once I finished high school, we'd take the train to Seattle and we'd go and, you know, do the Seattle scene with our little yeah. dress and our hair and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So most of those bands kind of stand up. I don't know, it was the really heavy poppy stuff. You kind of go, that was a thing. That was a moment. Yeah. 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 No. Um at that time, when you were 17, 18, what was the drinking age in Washington? Because I know uh, I'm older than you and uh, growing up in Ontario, we would go to Michigan, we'd go to Detroit, because at that time, the drinking age was 18. Ooh, um, so as a 17 year old, we didn't have pictures on our uh, licenses. So you just borrow someone's license and walk into a bar. <laughs> Can you imagine a driver's license without a photo? That's so <laughs> very funny. Well. Um, no, it was, I think, I don't think Washington state went that way. I think it was, I think it was 21, I think. Yeah, Mostly I think a lot that. of them were. I think Michigan I was the outlier. Came, came late to the drinking game also. I mean, did get my mitts on a few barbarian coolers in high school. <laughs> but, oh no, but didn't really, you know, experience true, um, hangovers until my 20s. <laughs> barbarian cooler sounds like an incredible juxtaposition right off the bat. I know, like a barbarian would drink a cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, do you have anything to add to the early Jennifer years? Uh, I, I do, you know, um, where I wanna go with this is, is I'm looking for, um, whether you whether there was an intersection of comedy and music in your home growing up and and to say that in the in the great tradition of the musical comedians uh flanders and swan you may be familiar with or um, american political lyricist um tom lear okay, okay. um shelly berman um early bob newhart and then and then uh um and then the non-musical ones but but you know funny acerbic um george carlin and stuff mm -hmm. i mean growing up with professional funny people who had to be funny to pay the bills i think what i'm what i'm what i'm after is if there was uh if if, if music was uh a respite or a safe place in your home where where sort of the guards could go down and music could be enjoyed as as a separate entity than their than the professional life your parents led right I mean, I did listen to a lot of comedy albums. I I listened to a lot of Spike Jones. So those were yeah. like kind of sure. goofy songs and stuff. Funny voices. I, yeah, yeah. And there were songs in there, you know, my old flame, <laughs> that kind of <laughs> yeah. stuff. I was basically an 80 year old person in a 10 year old body. Um, 
I listened to a lot of that stuff. I think my father was very into classical music. So we didn't listen to a lot of comedy music per se, but I know that um, on my dad's radio show, they did a lot of spoofs and oh, sure. ups of, of music, but there was a lot of classical. Here's a, here's a fun music story. My dad was obsessed with the soundtrack to The Shining. Ooh, oh. amazing soundtrack, it's terrifying. <laughs> and he always thought it would be fun on road trips if we were driving through the mountains of Washington late at night to put it on and scare the shit out of my brother. <laughs> so anytime I hear that, womp, womp, that is so womp, cruel. Womp, I just see us like winding through the mountains and my mom would let him put it on for a while and she'd be like, Bob, the children are terrified. <laughs> no. If you came home and had the had the hotel carpeting in your home yeah. i think that would be cause for yeah. great concern yeah. yeah but he was like it's a great piece of music what 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 and of course i've done that to my daughter because it's a That's tradition right. now and of course yeah it's, it's, it, oh. it, it's, it's, fa it's family lore yeah you know so uh yeah <laughs> So That's good. I love up. my nanny was a professional singer before she met my granddad in England. Um, but that was like the twenties. So I've actually heard her singing and she has that very old style of I was walking down the river's wide. And you're like, wow, oh, people, people listen to that for long periods of time. It's such a specific style. Oh what do you call it guys? Your music guys. What do you call that style? Old timey music. Old timey. Yeah. <laughs> I called it old timey. Old timey. But we were a classical family. That's old timey music. Sang the Messiah every Christmas. We were classical English people. Hmm. So I didn't know much what? until Michael Jackson came along and, you know. Changed your life forever. Changed my life. I stared at that <laughs> album cover and him in that white suit. I thought, who's this dreamboat? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I was going to ask you what song has such a strong association for you that like stops you in your tracks, you know, uh, and I wonder if it's The Shining now. Yeah. <laughs> Darker news, it's The Shining. Um, from my own, like, I was trying to think about that, like, what's a song where I'm like, oh, I think if, if, if I heard like, that I would like hit the dance floor no matter where even if there wasn't a dance floor I'd get out there oh my god if we Chris if we were more high tech and we had like the music we, oh we would get the the Jennifer yeah. dance show right now we, we could day. actually have a show <laughs> <laughs> we could actually have a show <laughs> so yeah poppy indie whatever my friends told me I had a bunch of friends who were very dedicated to Prince I did like Prince, but I didn't like, I wasn't obsessed with Purple Rain. Like a great deal of my friends were <laughs> obsessed with it. Yeah. Yeah, that puts it, I'm in that category. I was obsessed with Purple Rain. Yeah. And yeah. I was lucky enough to go see the concert too. Like oh, and yes. at that time, it was kind of crazy. Um, I want to know if there's a song and I'll, I'll set the stage here. Yeah. You worked at Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. <laughs> You know where I'm going with this. <laughs> is is there a song that comes on that you relate to Chuck E. Cheese and you're like, oh God, absolutely, I, this song has to go. Absolutely, at Chuck E. Cheese, I don't know if you remember, they had the robots on a stage. They had robot uh, versions of the characters, and every yeah. like half hour, they would do a song, and they always sang uh, "Taking Care of Business." <laughs> So I can't Randy. hear that song without thinking of the crazy, creepy robots singing about the business of Chuck E. Cheese. I can't remember what the lyrics were changed to. They weren't changed very much. And I don't know how much Chuck E. Cheese paid in royalties for that. Is yeah, it I possible to, the, could you sorry, quantify how sad that made Randy Bachman feel? I know. On Deep. a sliding scale. Um, <laughs> when he was having a bad day and his agent called and said, here's something, here's something. What if the Robotron <laughs> characters sang your song every half hour? Well, can you imagine how that meeting would go? Sundays? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because he, he would be an absolute no, no, no. And then the agent says, 
well, it could earn you this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I, I also want to know uh, one more Chuck E. Cheese question. Yeah. Um, when you were getting the boots laid to you, was there a song yeah. going on? <laughs> when I was beaten up by 12 year old boys in the uh, video game section. I. <laughs> Which is the wildest no, story. It's hard to hear in the upstairs because it's all the video games. So it's more like a bling, 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 boo, 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 and like my life force dying as they, <laughs> only time. Guys, I don't, I don't know if you know this, but it's not fun to be punched. And um, I don't recommend it. I can attest to that. Yeah. Peace, yeah, peace I, and love. You know what I'm saying? It's not a great choice. Uh, I have a follow-up Chuck E. Cheese question. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we're devoting so much of the hour to this. And, and it, it comes in the form of a confession. I've never been to a Chuck E. Cheese, <gasps> ever, in my life. Okay. I don't think my kids have either. Now they're adults now, which is good that they have. That would be weird but if there, you put them now, but it, yeah. There was a time, and I heard this, and I think this is an American statistic, but, and you can verify this, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. I heard... And I'm not kidding you when I say, I, I've heard that it is it is uh, statistically proven in America that the police are called to Chuck E. Cheese's more than any other restaurant chain in America. I, so I love I don't, that statistic. And, and this is an surprised. observation you... <laughs> I'm not surprised. It's, a, it's just a, a cesspool of... <laughs> of, of intense parents and intense okay. like birthday situations <laughs> and, and sugar unlimited ice cream like i'm not surprised yeah. definitely i mean the only time i've experienced violence upon my physical being was <laughs> at <Chuck E>. cheese. <laughs> so, well now i want to go <laughs> let's all Maybe go together you... guys let's find a Chuck E. cheese little video okay little experience yeah yeah i'm close to a grandparent experience at Chuck E. Cheese than I am anything else. So mm -hmm. I'm going to hold on tight. And, and uh, my goal is to have the police called and have me arrested <laughs> to complete the circuit. You want to be, you want to be I, the I, one. I yeah. want to be, I want to be escorted in cuffs out to a cruiser and have it filmed. <laughs> I have low expectations of myself. What do you think you're going to do though? What's your potential crime? Oh, it would, it would have to be interaction with some other parents. Yeah. Of course, the yeah. the, uh, it would never be, of course. I mean, On a trial. I, I, no, I, but I, I think kid, you... kids are right. It, it, would, it would have to be. <laughs> There's so many to choose from. Let's okay. move on. Let's move on. <laughs> How many things can go wrong at a Charles? <laughs> Charles. <laughs> hey, Jennifer, you, um, you spent a lot of time writing, uh, writing comedy. Uh, comedy sketches how much music did you write into your sketches was that a common thing or and and if you did would you try to be in the sketches or did you kind of write them for other people if there was singing involved in something I wrote I would usually try to pass it off to another person um I but here's the thing when I write I listen to music Full blast on the headphones. Really? Full blast. That's and your I'm focus. Sick. When I start a project, I'll make a tailor-made playlist for it. And I will, it's like I can't quiet my mind unless I have music blaring in my ears. And then I can write. Wow, your white noise is blaring music. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. You know, I... I fancied myself as a writer in one iter uh, one of my many iterations of life, and I actually had the five CD player, but I'd only put <laughs> Spanish music on there because I couldn't because I, I I didn't if I heard English I start I start singing along, but if it was Spanish then I'd be like it would definitely be with the white noise thing. Can you speak Spanish now? Did it? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> only in song. I can only Hola. sing it to you. <laughs> Muy caliente. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, I mean, there were songs on a sketch show that I was on for years. I did help write a few of them. I did not sing them. The first time I sang on camera was like for Shit's Creek. That's the first time I've ever sung for a TV show. Yeah. Uh, you were surrounded by some serious talent in that. So uh, major talent. Goodness. 
Yeah. Um, I, I have a I have a follow up to that. Actually, I'm going to leverage Brad's uh, question to to uh, throw this one out. Um, in, a, in a hypothetical comedy vehicle that you're involved with or you're right, um, I'll give you an example. Uh, Kids in the Hall used a great tune by Shadowy Men on a Shadowy Planet, yes. you know, for their kicker. Do yeah. you have just one, just one sitting in the back of your head that you would like to open a show, a vehicle of your creation that yeah. would set the pace for the show? Just something, because I'm, I'm getting a sense that, that you like that driving music, you like it loud. Do you have one in your pocket that you just love to set the pace yeah. for a show? Yeah, I, well, a lot of the things that I write now are, are, are darker than the stuff that I used to write. So I find uh, the last thing I was writing, I had, what's the name of that song? The Bjork song, but it was Sugar Cubes. It wasn't Bjork, okay. who I saw um, in downtown Vancouver at the Commodore Ballroom with the Sugar Cubes. And she was so drunk, they had to start one song four times. <laughs> Just starting at the wrong spot. It was amazing. It was everything <laughs> like concerts are supposed to be. Um, it's the, the one about her birthday. Is it called It's Her Birthday? With spiders, mm. spiders in her pockets. Chris, I told you we should have had an assistant working with us. We do. You know, we need. Her. How come we don't have a we don't have a PA? If you can, guys, I'm gonna find it right now because I've got my spot here, and I'm gonna well, search the playlist. Here it goes. So she, she didn't let you down because the fact that that's pretty much what you sign up for when you go to Bjork concert. Yeah, you know? you're yeah. signing up for Bjork. You want the whole, Absolutely. the whole situation. Okay, here it comes. It's uh, where did she go? One moment, guys. Just pause the tape. <laughs> oh yeah. Here, it comes. Here it comes. Birthday. Yeah, it's just called birthday. The sugar cubes. It's very dark and moody and Bjorky. And Bjorky. <laughs> I do I, uh... love that. I do love um this whole playlist. That but you're gonna make an even better playlist. Please, please, please by the Smiths. Oh, there you go. That's wow. one that speaks to me. I would I would love Bjork as an opening song to any because I'm currently writing half hours and a lot of them end up darker than I planned, but still funny, but dark funny. So that's why I would like like a Bjork type of a song. Cause I feel when, like when you when you're writing yeah. this, are you are you wearing a full size swan costume? Yes. yes. Okay. I just wanted to clear that up. <laughs> And I'm very drunk. It's well, I just not wanted, I just, I'm not meeting any of the deadlines, um, but I'm having yeah. a great time, you know, really <laughs> trusting myself. <laughs> I, I'm just glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> no, well, I asked and they said, there's someone else who but also has one of these. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And since you are dead drunk when you're writing, do you think <laughs> you're writing comedy? And then when you sober up, you're like, yeah. this is dark. God, yeah. surprise. It doesn't make much sense. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, you know, you know that we're making you a playlist and you've given us a few uh, uh, clear indicators of where you wanted to go. Mm -hmm. But um, I want to know, because we learned in that one hour uh, little extra to Shit's Creek, where, yeah. you know, it, it asked you uh, how things were going before you landed the role of Jocelyn. And you did <laughs> mention that uh, uh, I may have filled out an application to be a forklift driver. Yeah. All the glamorous. She started at Chuck E. Cheese and then uh, it was just because of the hours. That was the Petco, a forklift operator. Because at the time I was living in LA and my husband at the time was an actor. And so we were both like, how could we each get something to like contribute, but not, but still have our days open to audition for things. So the forklift shift at Petco was like from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. hoisting those like big things of dog Ouch. food. But I really did think the forklift was a terrible idea for me. And thankfully, Schitt's Creek cast me and I did not have to, well, have well, to do that. The, the reason why I asked this is that I'm like, uh, <laughs> what if you did get the job and you're like, I want to impress all my coworkers. I'm going to make them a mixtape. What Ooh. three songs would you put on that mixtape or what direction would you yeah. go, do you think? Even though you've never met them now, yeah. just in your mind's eye, do you think, 
I'm going to rock these guys, you know? Well, I take a theme very seriously. So if it was Petco, I'd probably try to find animal themed. Maybe we'd start with like hungry, like the wolf, <laughs> you know, <we'd laughs> kind of like <laughs> do that dog, any dog themed um, songs or cat themes like uh, love cats. We can tie yep. it into the cure. We yep. can do that. I definitely do an animal. I don't know if there's any songs about hamsters. There shouldn't be. <laughs> there shouldn't. Well, there's the, there's the theme song from Hammy Hamster. Yes. There's... Which is a classic. <laughs> yes. But no okay. one's ever written any badass rock songs about hamsters that I know of. Someone can surprise us with that one. You don't. You don't spend enough time on the dark web. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do the dark web, you guys. I'm not equipped for this. <laughs> I, I just want to add that speaking as a certified uh, uh, forklift operator, I think you're underestimating the joy of hydraulic performance. It was. It is a joy. more fun. Me afraid of hurting another person. Me afraid of crashing into something. There's, there's inherent danger in that occupation. I can tell you. But what I also can tell you is. <laughs> The forklift operator's test is not easy. It's not a walk in the park. I probably would have failed because I failed my driver's license test twice before I got <laughs> it. So I probably would never have even. It's a hundred times harder than driving a car. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Sure. The stakes are higher. <laughs> the, the potential to kill is far higher. Far higher. That's what I felt. That's why I thought I should be doing it. Yeah, wow. this has worked out well for you. Thank God I could do no, that. <laughs> oh my God, that was a close call. Good oh, Lord. Now I'm only um, kidding with my jokes. Oh. <laughs> hey, oh. um, you, you know, I romanticize, um, you know, I, it, me living in the restaurant world, I have so much new music coming through. I have so many uh, weight stuff and cooks and, and so many different influences. So they're constantly playing music, especially before service. And like, what's that? What's that? What's that? Um, do you have that? And I just romanticize the whole thing of like, yeah, you're hanging out and there's a bunch of PAs around and you're like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm totally set up. Do you, um, do you have good musical direction while you work? While I work, uh, yeah, there's always younger, cooler people. <laughs> I've reached that age in my life where there's always younger, cooler people who, who are more on the scene than I am. Um, I mean, I had a barista in... LA who would just tell me what to what to get or it would just be playing in the coffee shop when I would go and I'd go who's that and he'd go it's Gregory Allen Isaacoff who's great by the way love him very much um he's more on the folky side of yeah. things um so yeah I had I had the LA barista that would keep me in touch and then Dan on Schitt's Creek Dan would have a dance party every year, like about a week or two before we wrapped, he would just have a dance party. Um, but he, you know, I don't think he was an indie music kind of guy, but he had very curated taste and he would spend, you know, he's also shooting a TV show, but he would spend like a week preparing the, the list of songs and everybody would go and it was really fun. And we got to go to Italy when the show wrapped, um, Dan invited, the core cast to Italy. He rented a house in Tuscany and we got to go and see Elton John in Luca. And I guess Elton John's husband loves the show. So we went and met Elton and saw like all the sunglasses and fragrances he has backstage ready to wow. go. And then we got to just sit outside in Italy. I mean, this was, you know, <laughs> pre pandemic. You know, Absolutely. the fireflies and we're watching <laughs> this guy that we just got to hang out with and meet and he was so nice and funny and strong hands, strong handshake. Really? Strong hand. Well, when you think about it, those, those hands well, that, just. Well, Jennifer, that's just the thing because I saw him when he came to Vancouver and I was very close to stage by total chance. And, uh, but I wasn't sure if his hands could move that much because he just really was like this. I'm like, does he even have a grip? So that's that's illuminating to oh, me right. to know that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Those hands are going to keep playing. <laughs> keep playing. Don't you worry. <laughs> wow. Oh, that is uh, the uh, 
the life that we used to have pre-COVID. Wow, I just know. magical. Oh, I know. Just go to Tuscany. Tuscany. Sheesh. Big mosquitoes, though. <laughs> Big mosquitoes in the summertime, guys. Really? <laughs> Very exciting for me. They love me. <laughs> oh, they love me. People take me on walks because they want someone to, to attract too. mosquitoes. Yes. Unbelievable. Yeah. We're the repellent because then they'll just eat us and the other people can enjoy their time. Oh, I know. I actually went, uh, my family like went to Muskoka area or something and uh, we didn't do many trips, but uh, remember we w went for a walk after dinner and they're like, oh, that was great. I was literally still covered. I'm like, what? this is not a team game here, you know? Oh, well. um, hey, if you were, uh, if you were cast in a music bio biopic, yes. who do you think you would love to, um, to play the role of? York. <laughs> you got the costume already. <laughs> I got the costume. I would love no. to learn how to do that voice, how to talk like that with her voice that she talks with. You know, I'd like yeah. to. Yeah. And she's very musical. Part of my life after Chuck E. Cheese, um, I worked at musical theater theaters all over Toronto and Vancouver and sold merchandise for Phantom. And so any Andrew Lloyd Webber song is highly triggering. Um, <laughs> but I do have this love for musicals because I worked at Showstoppers, the musical theater store. So I have this love of theatrical Fosse, Bob Fosse type of musicals. I love Gypsy. Yeah, I just love it. That burlesque song is my favorite with all the different burlesque ladies and their outfits. So I do have a love of musicals. So that's what I like about Bjork is she's incredibly theatrical with her everything. <laughs> her dress, I love it. her style, um, yeah. Hey, um, there was a scene in Ginny and Georgia, the, uh, when you were chaperoning the high school musical. Yes. Or the high school, the high school dance, not the musical, the high yeah. school dance. Was that pretty damn accurate to your high school dance? It says, I think it was in 80s. No, um, my school certainly didn't have a roaming hot dog cart. Um, it was actually in Ginny, Georgia, it was a sleepover. And that was based on Sarah, the creator's real life. They had a thing at her school called the sophomore sleepover, which to me is insane that you would meet kids overnight. And I was essentially playing Sarah's mom in it because my goal was, I just don't want anyone to die. <laughs> if nobody <laughs> dies, this is a success. But that was not, they had lights. And I mean, I went to Marion High School, which was a really small Catholic girls high school. We had, we didn't have, I think we had one of those like color ball lights and that was it. There was no decorations or themes. It was like, it's a dance. There's some boys. Why don't you dance with them? There was none of the splashiness. I mean, I, TV shows love that because it's just an excuse to do really fun set deck, yeah. and, you know, yeah. go down, but uh, no. I can attest that production value in Catholic school dances is pretty low. Very low. <laughs> totally. There's no, th there's no three dimensional castles. No. Or you know, or or archways or anything like that. No. There, you're you're right. There's 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 a wooden floor. There's some yeah. boys and there's some girls. There's angry nuns and priests who tell you you're <laughs> dancing too close, and then then they tell you to go home, turn yeah. on the lights. Yeah, a couple of benches for the kids who aren't <laughs> dancing, and yeah, you no, know, just have a have a good time or not. And yeah, then the lights will come up and it's over. Yeah, go home. <laughs> don't sin. No, don't sin. Don't get too don't close sin. in the slow dance. Don't, right. don't kiss anybody. Come on. Oh, what? God, no. Oh, no, no. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm actually su really surprised when you said that your um, your first singing you know, on TV was, was Schitt's Creek, which is amazing because you were surrounded by so much talent and you know what's great about that show is that um, uh, many TV shows, they have like music going in the background, but it's mostly as people are like walking, like it's a background thing that is setting the mood because there's no dialogue, but Shit's Creek was just dialogue, dialogue, dialogue. Right. But when there was a musical scene, it was like focused on, you know? And uh, you said one of your favorite 
scenes was the last day during the wedding and and you were singing a lot and that yeah. you know the last 15 minutes was all singing pretty much well those ladies i mean over the six years of the show i got to spend a lot of time in rehearsal with the cast that was in the Jazz Gals and the other ladies who came in to be the Jazz Gals. And I mean, it was very challenging for me because it was four part harmony usually. And I just was like, why can't I sing the tune? I know the tune, why do I have to? <laughs> but they would put me next to someone really strong like Divine Brown or somebody incredible oh, or geez. Lily. And I would, I would just be close enough to them to stay, it was like a leash that kept, yeah. me, kept me in the right harmony by being close to them. But it was so fun. It's so fun to sit with a group of people. And when you get that perfect harmony, it's so beautiful. And we would all get excited when there was a rehearsal day for the Jazz Gals. We would all just love to sit and everyone worked really hard and it was so fun. And they would just randomly, it was like being in glee. They would just randomly sing between, you know, we'd be back like in the green room and someone would start a song and they'd all just start singing. And I'd just be like, this is bloody marvelous. Listen uh, to that kids. is marvelous. Yeah. You know what I love? I loved, um, you know, it, it's almost like a comedic writer um, or some, you know, the perfect comedian on stage always brings it full circle. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, especially in that last, that last episode, you had uh, Precious Love, love. you know, which is when I fell in love with the show is the last episode of uh, season two at the anniversary because that's when um, Johnny and Moira officially became your friends. Like they said to their friends, we're done with you. We're shit, yeah. you know, we live in Shit's Creek, which is a beautiful thing. And you, you guys uh, sang, that, uh, sang that and then of course, Simply the Best uh, uh, when wow. David was yeah. walking down and uh, no, oh, there was a there was a third one too. I, um, but in any event, I love how it came full circle, um, and that's just an observation that I, I just thought the payoffs were amazing in that last yeah. episode that they 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 tied it all together. Um, but I'm kind of curious. Um, were you surprised um, uh, when you first heard Sarah Levy sing? Because I'm like, where yeah. did that voice come from? Did you like? Yeah. Did you have a heads up that this was happening, or you know, especially oh. Silent Night with the Christmas one? I'm like. What the heck? Just I know. Out of her voice. No, Sarah has sung for a long time, and I had no idea, and was totally blown away. She has a beautiful voice. It's so her own voice. She's not trying to sound like anybody else. And uh, no, it was so cool. We did. There's a lot of stuff that we did that didn't even make it. Like we did sing the first like ten bars of "I Want to." fuck you like an animal we did harmonize that <laughs> but then we couldn't afford it the royalties were too we wouldn't hear back from them and we we're like we'll do it anyways and then we didn't but sarah and i sang a little bit of islands in the stream oh and, one which is and then we get interrupted by moira and she sings it in another in spanish language. or something yeah you're right and i wanted to ask you about that did you know that was going to happen because it seemed like you and sarah were just going then what like you know yeah. your reaction was like what, what are you doing? We knew she didn't show us what she was going to do, but we knew she was going to do something yeah. hilarious because it's Catherine, but we didn't know what exactly she was going to do. But when Sarah and I were rehearsing Island in the Stream, we were in a school and there was nowhere to go. So we actually went into, it was a bad, it was one of those actor moments where I was like, I want to die. So someone who was working at the school led us to like the janitor's office. With this no windowless sad janitor's office with like a like a really sad Jesus photo and I went well this is where we get murdered <laughs> and then the guy in, went in front of, I'm the janitor of... and this is my office and I went oh oh no I'm gonna die in front of oh, sad Jesus <laughs> I mean it has its charms oh god oh no so uh, you know Chris, I'm gonna uh, um and of course, the last one is uh, Emily Hampshire before Cabaret. Did you know that you she had that in her? I mean, Emily will can do whatever Emily sets her mind to. And she worked very, very hard with a voice coach on that. And what was cool about that is that she, she said, it, I don't want to sing it well. I want to sing it like Stevie would sing it. Yeah. And it was such a, an attention to detail that was so cool that she knew... 
Stevie was still Stevie. And while she would do a beautiful job, she had to do it within the confines of that character, which I thought she did brilliantly. So brilliant. Yeah, yeah. it was, yeah. that was a magical, magical moment. There were a lot yeah. of magical moments, but that was, that was pretty wow. Hey, Chris, uh, I don't want to take up too much more of Jennifer's time. We're going to ask her a few quicker questions, some of our random questions, but uh, do you have anything uh, you want to jump in here that you've been holding on to? I'm just loving watching you fan out on this. You were, I've never <laughs> seen you happier. I've, I've known you since what, 1988. I've never seen you happier. <laughs> You're losing it. I should have worn a kitten sweatshirt. I should have oh worn my a God. cat sweatshirt. <laughs> I'll buy that off you. <laughs> I have an HD screen here, Jennifer. He is 18 colors of blushing. I, look at you. Look at you. I have right, one so for you, Jennifer, and it's and it, I do. I've asked this several of several people because it does it, it interests me. So you have five, you have five, 10, 15 minutes to yourself. You you have your headphones on. I need yeah. to know the one song that you take a deep dive in and just get lost in. One hundred percent. You're hanging on every note. Time is limited. You got to get somewhere, but this is your private time. What's the, what's what song would you put on? You just you just yeah. you just you want to hear everything. I want to hear everything. Well, I I have a deep, deep love for Rhapsody in Blue. It has been one of my favorite songs for my entire life. Um, and that is one of those songs where I can just lie on the living room floor um, and listen to the whole thing and just be completely somewhere else. And it's such a, you know, a blend of Gershwin and it's such a journey. I mean, the song itself is, I don't know how long, it's 11 or 12 minutes long, yeah. but it's a story. Yeah. That song is a story. And almost because it doesn't have lyrics, I think it allows you more space to kind of find <laughs> your own story inside of that song. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's one of those songs for sure. Great. Well, wow, he he went with the uh, we got the serious uh, answer there. But yeah. what song in your what song in your repertoire do you do you like that you're like this doesn't make any sense at all, but I love it. But I love it. Here's I love this group. <laughs> Everyone else, my daughter hates it. My friends all hate it. I got a coupon on Mother's Day for my daughter saying you can listen to this for a whole car ride. <laughs> I like this group. I don't know anything about them. I found them as a, on a Spotify recommend called Jukebox the Ghost. And they kind of sound like a bunch of like music nerds from college, but they sound like kind of a Billy Joel throwback kind of thing. And I will put Jukebox the Ghost on <laughs> when no one, I have to put it on when no one else is around because no one else <laughs> likes them. And I'm like, this is fun. We like this. And my daughter's like, no, no. But she likes Ariana Grande. So come on. What are we? We're just in different parts of our life right now. And there's constant negotiations in the car, I bet. Yeah. 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 But also, you, just... you know, I want to listen to the stuff that she likes too. I never want to be one of those parents that's just like, we're going to listen to my thing because I'm like grown up. Like we do a pretty fair trade off. And I, you know, pop is it's not horrible yeah. sometimes it's fun and she's I'm loving this coupon idea you the got coupon. it come on <laughs> I, I spent an inordinate amount of time driving my my both kids my son and my daughter to sports but my my daughter and I had a deal yeah because so she was into rowing she had to be at rowing at 5 a.m so we drove the only rule in the car was she was the dj okay no sam smith <laughs> zero if Sam Smith comes on, it's over. What I'm happens? Off to the you, start your day with, you can't start your day with Sam Smith. You'll be just the weeping, the, the weeping, <laughs> the, the uncontrolled crying. It was like me at a high school dance. Nothing <laughs> says you love someone than like, I'll listen to stuff that I cannot stand, but I know you will. I'll show you the coupons on the fridge. <laughs> this is the greatest idea I've ever heard. I love the coupon idea. Here it is. I'm telling my daughter immediately. Yeah. I'm going to give her a Sam Smith coupon someday. 
This is so good. <laughs> the whole car ride in jukebox. The whole car ride. I mean. Wow. I They only have a couple albums. I don't know. <laughs> She didn't specify how long a car ride, but I know it's like, hey, we're not going to school today. We're going to Whistler. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Buckle um, up. Yeah. Uh, last question. Who do you want to see? Who's your next concert? Like who, who, and, and who would you just pay any amount of money for? You've already, you've already pretty much topped the list by, by meeting Elton, but uh, yeah, who do you want to see now? I really want to see, I saw Noah, Noah from Shoots Creek just, that was my last live show before pandemic times. I saw Noah and that was amazing. I really want to see, there's a group from, they're based in Nashville, but they live in Los Angeles now, a group called Johnny Swim. Um, and we've sort of become somewhat friends via social media and um, Shits Creek and all that kind of stuff. So I know that they're going to come to Vancouver at some point. So I'm looking forward to seeing my new friends play I love it. live. Yeah. We all have a lot of Instagram friends. I know. <laughs> yeah, Which so is when you're like, how do you know each other? Instagram. She's got I know. we start talking. It's hilarious. And now suddenly, you know. I know. And then when you meet them in real life, it's like, oh, let's just go back to Instagram, maybe. You're so hoping they live up to my expectations. I know. All right. <laughs> So it all leads to this. What kind of a mixtape do you want us to, to make for you? I don't think, I don't think I can dictate that. I think you guys, you guys have to set the tone. All right. You know what I, mean? I like the challenge. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. This I mean, I know the... I'm a bit of a mixed bag. I'm like the cure, but also this folk thing and also Gershwin. It's a bit all over the place, but... <laughs> Maybe we one can, that you would listen to for a, a whole car ride. One that you also would enjoy yeah. for a whole car ride. Wow. Chris, this is two times in a row we got car ride one. So I, I know. <laughs> I know. I, I have nothing. Uh, yeah. I, I, they're, the American Songbook, I can't guarantee, will be necessarily overrepresented in this mixtape. Not that I have anything against Gershwin. <laughs> but, but you've given us some incredible... Uh, um, ammunition to make you a great uh, mix too. Obviously, this is going to be such good fun yeah you got a lot going on this is a very cool I idea you guys i'm so excited to just be a part of it i love this idea so much i'm just oh swimming God. in brad's wake <laughs> well um i love hearing that because uh it you know music's such a great connector and uh and you know it's uh i i think of this and oh god this is gonna sound weird but you know, a mixtape is kind of like that opening scene of Pulp Fiction, you know, where uh, uh, Samuel L. Jackson, John Travolta are talking about the foot massage. And, and uh, I can't remember which one. I think it's John Travolta said, you know, it doesn't mean anything. And Samuel L. Jackson, you know, he goes into how Marcella Wallace, is, uh, uh, Marcella Wallace threw a guy off the, off the, the balcony uh, because he gave Uma Thurman a, a foot massage. And, and when you make a mixtape, it does mean something. So we're going to give you, you know, something from a little bit of love to you for sure. Oh, you guys. I can't wait. I can't wait. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. You. And uh, we'll let you know when we get it. Love it. Nice All right. To thank you. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Right, so we'll nice to meet you, Jennifer. All right. So we get to make Jennifer a mixtape um, with minimal rules. Although she did say there must be some Smiths on there. So anyways, um, here we go. Chris and, uh, and I had a lot of fun putting this together and here's our picks. I had to start off with, uh, with Bjork uh, because Jennifer did say that um, if she was going to play anyone in a film, it would be Bjork. <laughs> and, uh, and she's already got the, the noises down. She, <laughs> she did a little vocal for us on the way Bjork talked and uh and then uh I kind of did an obvious song it's so quiet you know that's uh that remake of um mm -hmm. Little Fuse or something like that um and um I don't know it's a fun song and it pretty much is is exactly what you sign up for with Bjork it's whispers and then it's screaming and uh and the video I don't know if you've ever seen the video but it's absolutely brilliant once again another Spike Jones video Right. That is actually a musical that starts out in like 
either a, a dry cleaning place or a restaurant or something like that. And they head outside and she's doing flips and dance moves. And um, it's, it's exactly what you sign up for with Bjork, you know? It, she didn't have the, the, the outfit per se of, uh, of feathers, but everything else was there for me. I, uh, oh, I agree completely. I had an opportunity to see Bjork in, of all places, uh, Tipperary, Ireland at, uh, <laughs> I, I know, <laughs> I know. And so there we were, uh, and, uh, and uh, just a, a, a great show, not as much stage theater as you might anticipate. But um, this, I think, 91, 92 when was when we when we saw the show. Uh, I, I think I think Bjork's um, performance evolved into becoming a little more uh, a Bowie-esque in terms of in terms of um, theatrical performance, yeah. but yeah. musically super tight. And you hit it on the head. There's this wonderful oscillation between whisper quiet and full on anguish scream. And it was yeah. cool, cool. You know, and you, Bjork is someone I've always taken for granted because she's been someone like a song comes out and you're like, that's very Bjork. And every now and then a mini controversy. Um, but it's, it's always rooted in the fact that she just wants people to stay out of her face, you know? Right. Um, and uh, I didn't know she had 31 top 40 singles. Like she's produced so much music. Incredible. Yeah. And she's... Um, she won a, a, a Best Actress at uh, Cannes Film Festival for, for something. Yeah. So, yeah. I, th I think I, that may have been the red carpet with the swan outfit. I'm not sure, but I think, th I think that one of her beautiful, intricate outfits was, was worn on that red carpet for that event. It yeah. Was, it was interesting. I always felt that, that musically she would be aligned with someone like Lena Lovitch in terms of vocal quality and vocal range in mm -hmm. uh, from from the from the super quiet to the super loud but um but great choice great choice for the mix well and i also laughed because I, I i was reading about uh, when they were shooting the or when they were actually recording that song uh they booked three hours with the orchestra because they wanted all the strings and it was quite elaborate and um uh with 15 minutes to go she walks in <laughs> And I believe it was two attempts and they nailed it and she walked yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone, everyone in the orchestra got their money's worth as well. <laughs> okay. Where do you want to go? Uh, I kicked it off with, um, with, uh, with the propeller heads with um, history repeating. Yeah. I'll tell you, you see, and, and this is going to, gonna gonna roll i kind of ran with a theme this is a fun song this is this is a song that's a throwback it's it, it it speaks to it speaks to uh you know kind of the 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 the, the big band it's a, you know it, it's this great truly bassy just kind of a grinder it just uh but it's a but more importantly it was a fun song i ran yeah. with a theme because Obviously, I've never met Jennifer before, and, and I wasn't so in tune with her work, but she seemed immediately like such a fun person. And I thought that the music that we select for her should reflect that. Yeah, she put up with us, so she's got to have a, a certain sense of humor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, I usually get shut down in the first five minutes. She gave me about an hour before she before my act got tired. So that's really huge. But um, I love, I love how the song sets up and I love how the song is presented. And I just think it's damn cool. And I think she's pretty damn cool. So I wanted to kick off my list, which is a bigger part of your list uh, or a smaller part of your list rather um, with that, because I think that it just, I'm trying to set a pace. And I thought yeah. that, that that one fit, you know, what? it's a bit it's of- It's also a good pace. It's a good pace too, because it's a bomb song, right? Like that was in a Bond film, you know, so it kind of sets things up for a little bit of adventure. Sure. And, and I think that's where uh, we were we were given uh, carte blanche with this situation. And, well, we were. We were and, and we weren't. 
<laughs> yeah, well, we, we, exactly. So, yeah. I love, I would love to say, just do whatever you want. Make sure there's a Smith song. <laughs> yeah. So there was, uh, it was, it was nice that there was, there was no criteria within a very rigid criteria. So take that any way you want. But uh, yeah, I went with that. What did you have for your number two pick? Um, I, <laughs> And this is it, where I thought I'd get it out of the way. And uh, okay, Jennifer, the Smiths, are you happy? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and, and you, you mentioned like, I mean, the, the parameters and your motivation. And there were certain things that she said throughout our chat. And uh, it wasn't as, as obvious as saying the Smiths, but there are certain themes. Like I, I, I remember, and, and my, my list will go uh, according to her being at the, one of the first Lollapaloozas. Right. So I, I was thinking about that. I was thinking for some reason, such a small detail in her life, but something I've really cottoned on to was applying for a job at the pet store. <laughs> so I had lots so of times good. that reference that. And then the, the torment of her father with the shining, you know, and how that's kind of transferred into um, her tormenting her daughter with that, uh, uh, jukebox or I'll, uh, jukebox the ghost and uh and I, I may have put in a few songs where she might be able to torment her daughter you know uh, likewise so so um i went with girlfriend in the coma uh because i love the song because it, it actually just makes me laugh all the time because it's about that when something bad happens how early can you tell a joke <laughs> you know <laughs> because his girlfriend's in a coma and he's like talking about yeah, I, I was thinking of strangling her or, or something like that. I was like, I know that's not appropriate. Is she okay? Can I see her? Like those type of lyrics. And it just makes me think of like, you know, when you're when you're goofing around or you're playing, something happens and someone has a huge wipeout and they hit their head and or something like that. And you're laughing, and then all of a sudden you're like, Oh, are you okay? And they're like, Yeah, yeah. And then you just like lose your mind laughing again. And it just made me think of those instances um, of of when you can tell that first joke after a tragedy. Yeah, it always begs the question, too soon? Absolutely. Too soon? <laughs> Absolutely. And then, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of my correspondence these days is over text, right? So you're like, you, you don't get any response for a day. You're like, oh. like oh, oh, oh. <laughs> You can almost hear the thud when that one hits on the other side of the phone. I know, and then you touch base like a day later, and it's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I was just busy. I'm like, oh thank God, you know. <laughs> um, but I do, you know, I like reading about fans' interpretations or their reactions to songs. And for this one, in one of the fan uh, uh, chat rooms, uh, this guy says, "The song means a lot to my girlfriend and I. It really is our song. I've never beaten her up or put her in a coma." <laughs> Oh. But before we were going out, I told her if she was in a coma, I would come and sing the song to her every day. And we were going out five days later. <laughs> <laughs> That's a keeper. Yeah. So the Smiths is uh, responsible for one intact relationship. Congratulations. Very nice. Very nice. So that's uh, that's number two for me. What do you got? I uh, I leaned heavily in, towards power pop on my list because I was getting sort of an energy from Jennifer that she would enjoy that type of thing. And um, the song I Love You by Said the Whale is, yeah. is prime power pop. It yes. has, it, it's almost like they've checked all the boxes in terms of uh, jumpy lyrics, chorus, verse, verse, uh, uh, verse chorus um, set up, great guitar work um, and, and uh, and that one just sort of immediately um, struck me as something that Jennifer should have on it for no other reason than I thought that she should have that on her mixtape. And they're they're a Vancouver crew. Absolutely. From the area. Yeah, yeah I think the some from the island, but I think I, was, I think Vancouver crew. And I think I may have I may have partied with one of them in the backyard. Um, yeah, I tried yeah, to be, I do try to say. be not geographic specific, but I've always tried to throw uh, with our other guests, I've tried to throw in a, a regional reference to be yeah. fair. Yeah, and I was, uh, your list uh, has, has more pop on it than I've ever seen. Oh, uh, I, 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 and this speaks completely to the energy I was getting from Jennifer. Yeah, uh, well, you know, I almost wondered if- I know she has some terrific roots, 
but uh, but what she does for a living and and uh, uh, and stuff just it's uh, it, it spoke to me. Power pop was 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 my thesis and uh, and really my conclusion. Um, did you get any help from the uh, from the younger members in your in your house on this? I didn't. The younger members of my house have all vacated to to be with others. <laughs> this is all my doing. I'm I'm 100% responsible for this. Wow. Is there is there, uh, there there's one on here that just uh, uh, my eyes went wide open. We'll get to that. Okay. So um, I, I I I alluded to this before. I, I was a little too infatuated with uh, her Petco experience or, or oh. almost Petco experience. Yeah. And I've always loved this cover of Today by the Fruit Bats of the Smashing Pumpkins Today. And they do such a great job with it. Mm -hmm. Change the tempo quite a bit. Their voices are amazing. But um, one of their albums is called Pet Parade. Very and good. when when he was asked, um, why did you name it Pet Parade? He grew up in small town America somewhere. His grandmother uh, would have maybe monthly or occasional parade days with the neighbors and her other friends. And uh, where <laughs> they take their pets and dress them up and take them over to someone's house and they have a parade that day of the pets. Really? This is Corrigan? <laughs> no, 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 no. This is uh, Fruit Bats, the people oh, sorry. who covered this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Okay, that is damn funny. That is such a and you, so America. And it paints a picture. I guarantee one of those dogs is wearing a red, white, and blue cape with the full-on stars and stripes. Yeah. That's and, so and, and so many of those individuals who participate in this pet parade are currently training their dog to just walk on the hind legs, you know, like there's there's gonna be theatrics for sure. Yeah. One of my earliest TV memories was watching the Ed Sullivan show at my grandparents' house in Kingston. And there was three dogs dressed up as superheroes dancing on their hind legs. And this is television. This is primetime TV in the 60s. And they were playing the Batman theme. And these dogs were sort of not fighting, but they were dancing around. And I don't know why that stuck with me. I know exactly. It was a, it was a little portable black and white TV with or, orange case and i knew the room i was in so so performing dogs obviously have something jammed into my psyche uh, that so i could relate very well i wish i was in town for that pet parade i tell you you know it's not something i would regularly attend but i would love to attend one <laughs> absolutely we should make that a goal <laughs> we can we can fit that into the uh, our schedules hopefully let's attend that together <laughs> We'll make that a priority. <laughs> My bucket list is now I have one more item. <laughs> uh, where, where are you going now after uh, I set the bar so high? <laughs> this is where I went with coffee for your head. Is this the one that... that this that, is the one that I had never heard about. And then I, well, you go on, but I was like, where did you find this? This is a gem that, that I came across not long ago. A couple of years ago, and um, and I don't know where I was or the discussion that I was having um, with a producer, and we were talking about um, we were talking about an an introduction to a song that that has a gramophone feel to it, with an old, you know that that sort of you know, and not a needle on a thirty three. Which is a little more silent. This is a little more rougher, and and uh, and the has more weight to it. Was that, yeah, that that this um, the intro to Coffee for Your Head, uh, Deathbed, and um, and uh, I had a peek at that and uh, a listen, and it's just it's um, it's been great. It stuck with me, and I, I've always like for a couple of years. That's that song's been. You know, I, I play that one once in a while, and it, it's been remixed. And you know, like many things, it's been um, been kicked around in a, in a few different iterations. But uh, but I love it. Oh, I love it. I've since you sent this to me last night, I played that a lot, and now I put on different mixes of mine. Oh, <laughs> I, it's going to be on a lot of like I will hear that a Great. lot. Yeah, Great. it is. But you know, uh, I was wondering if you you found this guy because he started out 
YouTube video. Yeah. And TikTok blew him up because people were using you, this song. You know? Yeah. And uh, so we got a resurgence and it went bigger. But I was wondering if you found it because of his dad. No, you know what? It was, it, it, it's funny. And, and that's usually the way I would find something. But it was, it was, it was entirely um, discussing a sound process uh, with, 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 a, with a producer who, and, and we were only, I was, and, and the whole idea was the intro to this, to this song and sampling, sampling that rough gramophone. And that's yeah, and and then I heard that and it stuck. So yeah, so, normal. So for for the viewers at home, <laughs> his dad is the punk rock quasi legend from Faber Drive. Right. Yeah. So yeah. okay. So, so just we just reference that, but cool, amazing. And now he's his manager, you know. So um, you know, uh, but he grew up with music and playing the drums and all that stuff, and he kind of had it in his bones. But it's once again a testament to. Um, uh, us not imposing our values on our children uh, because the fact that you know I'm sure this kid was hanging out in his room way too much but at the same time he was doing stuff he's trying to figure it out and and all of a sudden he just said I might just do a little sampling over right. a, a, a bit that he got off of SoundCloud you know the the music for this song started at SoundCloud like it's, yeah. it's amazing of just poking around and finally you know it clicks and and uh, also the power of sampling to change everything about uh, a song, and then and then and then using on top of the bass tracks. I mean, then it it, it lends itself to obviously some um, some rap narrative or or different things. And, and and you know, and 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 Dido did virtually the same thing with the uh, obviously with Slim Shady's um, yeah. track top right so with Stan yeah. so so there's it references that no question but I just thought you know what it, it just uh the first time I listened to it uh, um I listened to it in the car and I had to listen to it about four times it just it was it was different and a great it had a had a, had a cool groove yeah absolutely another uh, cool kid from Mission BC there you go. local yeah <laughs> now that I didn't know so that was a fluke well, you, so far you've got like two out of three are like local kids. I love it. <laughs> what uh, what path did you find yourself wandering down for your next? Well, I think this will will end my my pet fascination, okay. but it was also this ties in Lollapalooza because in the if she would have seen Jane's addiction at Lollapalooza, probably would have been the headliner. I, I don't know, but uh, pretty sure. Um, and then caught stealing, oh. probably their most famous one, I guess. Um, and, um, but it starts out with the dog barking, right? So right. like, you know, that, that's the opening of the song. As soon as you hear that, you know, in any, in any bar, you're just like, let's, let's do this, you know? <laughs> um, but what I love about, uh, you know, you, as you know, I have a fascination with how people come together Absolutely. and how they decide on band names. And this, you know, Harry Farrell was living, his roommate was Jane, heroin addict. His girlfriend, uh, I, I can't recall her name, but um, so they had the band going and so some things were happening, but they needed a name for the band. And in the car, Perry Farrell's girlfriend says, um, how about Jane's heroin addiction? And, uh, or Jane's heroin experience. Okay. And, um, and, and he's like, no, 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 no. That, that's, that's um, I need something more vague. And they went with Jane's addiction. <laughs> no one will figure that one out. Hey, uh, yeah, that's uh, I, I I'd never heard that uh, that one before, ever. <laughs> Absolutely. So perhaps he wasn't totally sober when he he made this wild distinction that this would be so much classier. <laughs> and and good thing he did. <laughs> it set him up nicely for a few years down the road absolutely okay where are you going <laughs> uh look this is a nugget that that most people probably think has been the, the treads are worn out on but um but i went with um arctic monkeys uh uh bet that you look good on the dance floor which rips right from the beginning i love how it's just like you're in yeah um 
it's uh it, it's just exactly it's it, it's it's power pop fun from the first note to the last and it has uh it, it just has a great fun pace to it it uh it, it's got it, i think it's pretty much uh you know uh has, has the sensibility of a song that that probably should at some point appear on a fun tape yeah 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 i don't think there's a whole lot of deep meaning uh to it it's just a great um great observation song yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah and i i pretty much forgotten about it because it had uh i i haven't heard it for quite some time actually so <laughs> i'm glad you know what i love about this is that propeller heads totally forgot about them <laughs> did that you know um the kid the coffee beds crazy and never would discover him and then just a refresher of arctic monkey monkeys you know it's like i you forget about these certain bands you know yeah and and uh just over the over the past number of guests because i'm collecting i'm collecting uh i'm collecting the the the, the set list i've i've brought things things back to the front of the page that were in the back of the page that you found that it, that have really informed my recent music listening as yeah. i uh, uh, you know, because um, I, I certainly do a whole lot more music than than TV or anything in the house. So yeah. it's fun to just to crank these things on and have a blast with them. And it, yeah. it's, it's great. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's a real ride. I do laugh, though, as I mentioned before, it's like Spotify doesn't have a clue who I am, like when they do their smart list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they will. Oh, they will. I, I am everybody right now. My God. <laughs> Um, I went with The Cure, and I think, mm -hmm. I don't know if she mentioned, I think she did mention The Cure uh, few, somewhere in there, but I went with Lullaby, um, and um, just because I think this this is a perfect song for him, because, you know, he's he's quirky, he's dark, depressed, anxious, and this is that song where he's, he, from a childhood, he had this recurring dream of being eaten by a spider. And this is all about like that, that lullaby of being eaten by a spider. And then uh, whoever directed the video was, uh, it was the motivation was from Eraserheads. And it's one of the best videos of all time. It's so, it's just brilliant. And, you know, he just lays there in the bed the entire time. And then the spiders come and it's, it's <laughs> it is uh, something that's, uh, um, yeah, if you, uh, if you had substances in your body, I think you get three or four times as much out of this video as uh, sober for sure. This this sort of makes me feel good about being a being an insomniac. Is is and if I suffered from that situation, I probably would never sleep. I mean, I don't sleep much, but I probably would never sleep under those conditions. So absolutely, <laughs> I know. Great pick. Can you though. imagine? Can you imagine? Okay, uh, where are you where are you at? um i really i i i i uh i went way way back to um oh. again um there's uh, sorry chris chris you just you just uh faded out you just came back so just reintroduce that oh. sorry about that uh we, yeah. we, we, we okay now yeah we're good yeah uh, I, uh, I went, uh, I went back to the back catalog and went with XTC senses working overtime. Yeah. And, uh, in, 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 in true power pop sense, you know, the, the, I don't think you could, you could, you can get more power poppy than XTC yeah. and, and, um, uh, Toronto native now living in, in the States, uh, Paul Myers has, has written extensively about power pop and he's, he's an author of many music books, but, um, but, uh, uh, and he, and he's, he, I believe he's writing currently or has written about XTC. And if you look at their catalog of fun pop, they are, you know, um, unfortunately there was some, there was some issues about playing live, uh, which, which, which made them almost exclusively a studio band but uh you know for the 80s it, it speaks entirely to power pop of the 80s and 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 senses working overtime my reference really in terms of of jennifer was the way that 
that she and her colleagues have presented this show and it speaks to all kinds of senses it has your funny bone it's an emotional ride it's great so i i mean i, I couldn't help but throw that one in for her mix okay it is designed to be targeted exclusively uh for that and and i realized that born in 71 it, you know it might not have been you know, she would have been 10 years old or so when, when, um, when the song was released, but, uh, but later, and if she's not familiar with the catalog, I'm hoping that this one would, would uh, um, at least have her bopping her head along to it, because I just always thought that that making plans for Nigel, that era of XTC is just unmatched in terms of just great songwriting in a very, uh, in such a positive way. Yeah. Well, I think she's got quite a, she, she has a pretty deep catalog because of the fact that she had other people giving her music all the time, like, you know, like falling in line with other people's likes and this and that. So there must yeah. have been someone in that crowd that, uh, and plus, you know, living in North Burnaby, you know, bit of a rougher crowd there. That's got to be an XTC crowd. Come on. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not, not to suggest that she would, she would have no idea, but uh, it may not have been anybody's choice to put on a tape exclusively directed for for to mirror our conversation with her let's say i love it <laughs> i would like someone else to do these lists after we do them to see if there's anyone who makes our picks <laughs> i know I, I, exactly exactly they're totally illogical i fixate on one job application at petco and i put my entire playlist around <laughs> Yeah. Um, she mentioned, I remember asking her about concerts and the last concert she saw was uh, her um, mm. her colleague on uh, Schitt's Creek, Noah Reed. Um, but she, I said, what's the next one you want to see? And um, she was talking about her, her new Instagram friends, Johnny Swim, who, yeah. uh, you know, reached out and I guess they, they messaged back and forth. And so I looked this this husband wife team up and uh, they met in Nashville and um, and I, I love, uh, I don't know if, if you've done this, but I, I think things have worked out very well with you being married, but um, he, so he, he, was, he was coming out of a church, uh, Sunday church service and uh, with his present girlfriend. And then she walks out and he says, that's the girl I'm gonna marry in front of his girlfriend. And he, to his credit, he did. <laughs> and uh, and now they make beautiful music together, but uh, also my fascination with um, and it's just, it's a lovely song and it kind of reminds me a bit of uh, or made me think of um, you know I was surprised that Jennifer said her her, her first singing experience in TV was Shit's Creek yeah. and there was yeah. a fair amount of it you know the, you know there's there's many episodes where it uh, it definitely had a prominent role and uh, but these two people this husband and wife team sing uh together and there's lots of harmonies and that's what she was doing on the show uh and the challenge that she spoke of um but also my fascination with band names and this they got the band name johnny swim uh from the scene in jaws and uh where john this kid john was on a raft and from the boat they're saying swim john swim knowing he was right. dead <laughs> So. The, that's the, I think that that all occurs in what the first thirty seconds of the movie too. So it sets a pace. <laughs> Absolutely. I tell you, that's a bold prediction for a guy with a girlfriend walking. No, that's bold. I know, but my you mother, know, do you do you try to re, do you do you try to repair that? Um, yeah. Uh, once she says, uh, you know, I'm standing paper. right here. No. <laughs> so it's like okay i guess we're good i'll give you a ride home and i guess i guess that's it now to be fair my wife has says that has said that on many occasions and i think she means it she just has never followed through <laughs> <laughs> i was wondering where you're going with this i'm like did she actually say to someone that's the guy i'm gonna marry no not me she says it <laughs> i've been referred to in her meetings her work meetings as her current husband <laughs> well my current husband <laughs> hey it's it's going to be current she's keeping her options open <laughs> absolutely blame her in the modern world <laughs> where are you off to um 
I got to tell you, I, I stuck with a horse and ran with it. And I pulled out a band that will never be known for anything except this song. And it's the romantics, What I Like About You. Hey! <laughs> uh, you may remember, this, this song reminds me of, of sort of pub, dance floor, Alfie's type of situation. That, that they're gonna put that one on, and it's the type of song that um, that uh, you know is probably it's it's probably gonna appear at a lot of DJ weddings. Certainly in the '80s, it was gonna be on at least once a night in a pub. But it it speaks to um, it's sure it's a candy floss song. I, I don't think there's any question about that. But it's a fun song. It's a, it is fun from the start to the finish. It never, yeah. it never pretends to be anything else except mm -hmm. that. Yeah. I don't think the band ever, band ever made an attempt to be anything but that. Yeah. I thought it was a good, good um, reflection of uh, Jennifer. I think that Jennifer, who I don't know, seems like a ton of fun. And uh -huh. I, th I think that the fun thing is, 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 uh, is what I like about her. And I had to put on the song, what I like about you. Yeah, as you said, like, I mean, as soon as you hear that start, do, 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 and then, you know, hey, and it's like, you know, right away, you're on the okay. dance floor. Absolutely. Yeah. So it is super fun. And I, that does take me back to our university years. Like sure. that was in heavy rotation. Every, every oh, DJ absolutely. threw that down. Yeah. You I know, mean, how could you not? You, you know, if, uh, you know, our previous guest, Tyler Coral is talking about that song that's going to take it from eight to a 12. It's like, you know, if people are kind of milling about, it's like, throw this on. It's like, now you got a dance floor. You can do what you want after this song. It, it's a gimme. And I understand it's cliche, but I think that there's a quality to that song that speaks to Jennifer's immediate likability as a person. Yeah. 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 We're going to have fun. We're going to have fun. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. Well, speaking <laughs> of fun, um, she was talking about, it was a, kid the music in the house her and her brother would march around to neil diamond yeah <laughs> and, and, and uh you know hopefully some good outfits and uh and that would be their entertainment i'm sure uh, as a as a mother her mom was like i'm just gonna play this on repeat for about 10 times and wear them out i wonder how often hot august night got put on in that <laughs> So, because I just thought Neil Diamond, I thought Vegas, for some reason, I just thought the Bee Gees and uh, Islands in the Stream. Yep. And it does have a tie in there. But, um, you know, they, you know, after Kenny Rogers uh, made a, made, you know, this pretty popular, they record it and it's a live recording, which I love. Um, but this is also a pretty cool scene that her and I referenced when we were chatting of, uh, her and uh, Eugene Levy's uh, daughter singing Islands in the Stream in the show. And then Catherine O'Hara is in the background. It just goes off in either Italian or Spanish and just singing. You were just like, what the fuck just happened, you know? And, <laughs> you know, it would be, I think the people that worked on the set, you know, a lot of times in TV and film, you're bored stiff. But oh, anytime well, there's, there's so many scenes there where you're, you're probably holding the boom mic or something and shaking, laughing. Like you're, it's, it's just the stuff that could happen. It was such a zany show and, and Catherine O'Hara. So that was a, this kind of speaks to that episode of islands in the stream and the Bee Gees and Neil Diamond. And I don't know, I'm trying to tie our entire life together. So, so there you go. No Great. deep meaning. That's, good. That's yeah. <laughs> well done. You, 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 uh, you really, you really uh, got the, uh, Got the knitting needles out to weave that one. That's a <laughs> I sure did. And it might be a bit of a stretch. I don't know. You had the loom rocking. <laughs> that uh, little little string. Good good on you. That's great. Um, uh, you know, uh, I I I went to. Uh, I seem to be stuck sort of in a bit of a time sense, but um, I um, I went with this is the day. Um, My favorite song. Uh, you know what? That song, it just makes you happy. You cannot yeah. put that on and it will and, and not make you happy. And mm -hmm. it's just, it has, uh, it has this uplifting uh, thing about it that, uh, that just said, you know, 
necessarily. I mean, I, I I understand I ran with something, and there and there and there was some some a time frame that I seemed to glom onto. But that song in particular, um, uh, I remember from from a particular summer, and it was just it was happy. It was a happy song, and it was a it was a happy time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and it is my karaoke song because I think I could pull it off. Oh. I think I could because you notice how he sings it. He kind of talks, sings it, you know, like Absolutely. there's not a lot of singing, singing. So, you know, I've, I've, I've secretly, and now it's not a secret, practiced that a little bit in the car. And I think I could do it. When it comes up, promise me that you'll ask who's ever running the show to give you a little extra reverb. You've got to have the <laughs> reverb on the vocal for, to fill it out. Just, just <laughs> lean in and say, I'll give you 10 bucks if you just jack the reverb so I can just have a little more of a rounded tone. And this is not, this is no consideration of your vocal talents. It's just to achieve that sound, you're going to okay. need it. Okay, good. I've, that's in the notes. The and and dim, the day. And dim the lights. And, oh, it's got <laughs> lights. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to pull Everything a, I do has to be dim lighting. Everything. I'm going I'm to pull a Jim Morrison, just look the other way. <laughs> my two best be friends are dim lighting and soft focus. <laughs> I, I go my through a lot of glass lean on the lens. <laughs> hey, she uh, she talked about the coupon. One yes. of the most memorable memorable moments in our short recording career was seeing was the coupon funny. from that her was daughter. Damn funny. <laughs> and it's because of what's it called jukebox the ghost and i don't think i ever would have found this band without our friend jennifer um they've been around for a little while and so i had to put this on but i put their song on called jump started because i think she can fool her daughter i don't think she'll have to use a coupon when she plays this mix because it is very much like queen her daughter might think hmm, this sounds like queen i'm gonna let this slide no need for the coupon to come out mm -hmm. Um, this band is infatuated with the Queen. It's no, it's no okay. uh, mistake on their part. And in fact, once a year, they play a show called Hello Queen. And the first half is them doing their stuff, break, and then they dress up as the members of Queen and do Queen covers for the second half. They love Queen. Oh, the crap. Nice. Yeah. So this is for Jennifer not using her coupon and she still gets to listen to this band. That's that's good sneaky. Very sneaky, you know? And sneaky. Uh, and hopefully her daughter doesn't watch this podcast because <laughs> the secret will be out. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure how big we are with that demographic. <laughs> I think we're safe. <laughs> we're safe. <laughs> good, good call. Good call. Um I I I I went uh, I went to one of my one of my favorite uh, artists. I went with uh, Lloyd Cole, and uh, yeah. and and I chose the song "Brand New Friend." The first time, the first time that, uh, and it would have been in the early '90s that that Carolyn and I saw uh, um, saw Lyle Lovett. Carolyn left the show and said, "I I just want him to be my best friend. <laughs> I, just, I just want Lyle to be my best friend." because he, he gives off that he's friendly vibe. And I, I've never met him personally, but I can only make that assumption that, that, that he, he is genuine. And, and, um, and uh, I, 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 can, I, can, I can clarify, I have, no, I have no stalking tendencies and I may never meet Jennifer again, maybe, but probably not. But, but uh, I put in brand new friend because I think she's the type of person who would just be an awesome friend. I should be, you know, a funny, great person who you don't see very often, but it's always good to see her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, for that reason, and, and the song, I mean, I love Lloyd Cole. Like I just like everything about the way the music is presented, but uh, I especially like the uh, the introduction with with the with the with the off time drum beat and then the accordion. I mean it it takes you in it takes you all over the place. Yeah, Are, is that a big band? Lloyd Cole. 
like in terms of many people on stage? I, 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 th I think it's, I, I think the presentation is more of a studio situation. Okay. Now, live, it's live. Lloyd has five on stage. Okay. But, um, but I'm, I'm not sure how they recreate the live sound as opposed to the studio. Okay. I wasn't too sure. Cause there's a lot in their music. There's a lot going on. So I wasn't oh, too sure yeah. if they were like a, yeah. you know, they were, um, you know, like a band that has 18 members on stage. So yeah. It may very well be. I mean, you can, you can hear, you can hear, there's, there's a lot of moving parts in their music for sure. There's Absolutely. a lot of, there's a large, wide variety. It's not, it's not, uh, it's certainly not drum guitar bass situation. <laughs> And I think that's, that's, it's, it's just magic. I just, I just think it's, it's great. So, so um, from a, from a confirmed non-stalker, I went with brand new friend. <laughs> well, it does speak to what, what you were talking about with Jennifer is like, you know, cool caller. We're, we're two morons. And she said, sure, I'll talk to you. You know, come on. You know, so that's a good start to a potential yeah. friend for sure. Exactly. You know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, she was very and, kind, uh, very kind and, for sure. And what, uh, and I, I, I'll maybe put it in, but uh, you know, as it started off, where you and her uh, showed each other pictures of your radios. <laughs> Come yes, on. Yes. We, yes, we have an affinity for, for vintage radios. Absolutely. Now, that's the type of person you want to hang out with. Come over right. and see my radio. <laughs> I, I seem to like the show and tell. I, I showed Tyler my slow album. Yes. And then Jennifer got my radio. It's a good thing I'm in my kid's room, or maybe a bad thing. I don't really have anything. <laughs> don't open up that Murphy bed. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'll just like just keep things on the down low. Um, you know, I, oh, I've just got a couple left. You actually did more than I did, which is amazing. Um, I did, and once again, this goes back to Lollapalooza. That's why I put in Fishbone, because Fishbone was at that Lollapalooza that Jennifer would have been at. Love Fishbone. Um, love the song. You know, it's, mm. it's, uh, it makes me laugh when you actually, the lyrics, bang, bang, shoot me dead. Thought my baby loved me, but I've been misled. My, my, she sucked me dry. Now the little missus wants to say bye-bye. And for a ska band, <laughs> Yeah. It sounds like a country song. Um, Fishbone has had a run over the years of playing at, um, at uh, Toronto's Lee's Palace, Blur and Bathurst. And those shows are always the perfect sweat boxes, the absolute fun, upbeat, just absolute, uh, um, yeah, yeah. And uh, probably the number one favorite band of my um, uh, a friend of mine, Paul Brady, who's a great drummer. But um, but he he is he is a huge fishbone guy, huge. Okay, well, and and so you hit that one out of the park. Great choice, great choice. I would get along with band. get. I get along with him just fine because I that's my go to when I just want something fun, you know. Yeah, yeah cooking or something. It's just like put that on and uh, let's get <laughs> after it. Um, I, uh, I I ran with a Kingston band. Weeping oh, you Cry. did. And uh, I'm sorry, I forgot Sarah had a career before it was just Sarah, Sarah Harmer. The, the fantastic Sarah Harmer had a band called Weeping Tile before her, her, um, her, her solo uh, incredible acoustic career. And I love this band from the Toucan days on Princess to, to the shows they played in the Toronto scene. And, and Lee's Palace was a place I, I saw them a bunch of times. But um, the song... So so they were there at the Toucan yes. in 90, 91? 88, 88, 89, 90, I think Weeping Tile probably broke uh, right around that time and ended up doing the sort of the Toronto and West Circuit from there. So I've seen them. Some like, you know, the, I guarantee, you know, you. I guarantee I saw, you. you know, the Mahones and Joy and, yeah. um, you know, all those those bands she was in that mix that's yeah the small this i mean you you know the stage in the back in the back of the first floor at the toucan yeah yeah it's, uh was definitely definitely that and and uh and it's not only a terrific record but the song ufo rosie just i mean it's it's um it's it's a mysterious song but it's it's fun and it's spooky and musicianship is fantastic and i just i i, 
I, I just loved it. And I thought, hey, you know what? I think that one deserves to be on there. I know I, 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 I spent a little, I went a little overtime with a few other choices, but uh, that one I thought did, did deserve to be there for sure. Oh, I love the overtime with your choices, but this, <laughs> I actually looked it up. I'm like, Weeping Tile. And then I'm like, oh my God, of course, you know? So, and I knew she had a band. I knew she hung out in, mm. um, in Kingston. And, and I think, you know, her, her solo career was actually doing, was that doing songs about her, her grandpa left like yeah. some music sheets around or something? Like that's how she kind of went solo, just kind of hacking around. Yeah, and just a, a huge supporter of environmental causes, yeah. uh, watershed causes, and, and so on and so forth. And uh, yeah, and and uh, uh, but just a just an incredible Canadian talent, an absolute yeah. huge, huge talent. God, I love how Kingston uh, sprung so many bands that I genuinely like. <laughs> you know, like oh, Glory God. Sons now, but uh, but you know the Mahones will always be. Sure, uh, I've seen the Mahones like 20, 30 times, and it's always just ripping you know fun they're just a yeah it's 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 a fun it's a, they uh they give what you came for every yeah, time absolutely absolutely yeah hey um so you've got a couple more but i've got uh my last one is yes. the is noah reed her colleague uh schitt's creek and mm -hmm. um the last concert she saw and um and you know you, you Obviously, we got introduced to him on the show of doing some singing there, and it was pretty breathtaking. What he did was simply the best. But uh, uh, his, uh, I think he's got a couple albums out, but this one song got you. Uh, I love the video. The video is uh, it's one of the most inclusive videos uh, you'll ever see. It's just people dancing around to the song, genuinely having fun, doing a simple dance, uh, and doing it a lot of times just goofily. Um, and um, and there's there's every Oh, there's there's so many people represented here in terms of nationalities, in terms of uh, abilities, and um, I just thought, God, it's uh, if if Noah, um, it's almost a video that is his solo career, but at the same time, it's all Shit's Creek too, you know, in terms of like just uh, embracing everyone and everyone's everyone's cool and let's have some fun. And um, I don't know, I, I like it. It's a catchy tune, and um, it's uh, I don't know, as you know. I love the show way too much. So uh, I will always love like whatever comes out of that show with all their <laughs> careers, you know? So I, I can't wait for uh, Sarah, Levy, Sarah Levy and uh, and Mutt on the show have a show. Uh, I think it's Real Estate Agents, which gets really dark and twisted. And it's on some channel now, Hulu or something like that. So oh, I definitely got to check that out. Yeah. So anyway, so that's my last one. Noah Reed, lovely voice. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely not complicated. It's just fun. I um I'll wrap it up just with uh, with uh, with two I I think that that uh, as I went into overtime uh, a little bit um, uh, the magic number by De La Soul is fantastic and I can't find it on Spotify so I'm gonna dig deep to find this because it's such a good tune damn I know because that one is and it's a uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's another song. I don't think it's it, it's it's not not dissimilar to the the um, um, uh, this is the day. It just made it's just it's a happy song. You cannot put that song on. Well, and, yes, and, you it's, know, got, it's it's got a, it has a bit of a Sesame Street vibe, right? <laughs> it, ha, it it does it does it 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 has it's it, it, it's terrific and. Um, and uh uh you know so changing pace a little bit love that one i also threw in um always the sun by the stranglers as which, you know i love the stranglers yeah which uh which i in terms of uh, of the vibe and disposition that jennifer gives off and, and i just think that she's uh, that she's she's she exudes positivity and she's yeah. got very sunny personality and uh and i did want to reference that so uh, always the sun um uh is uh i just i just i had to lob that one in there because it certainly changes the musical um pace of of our list but uh i you know i needed to i needed to i needed to put that one in and uh because she was born in 1971 that would put her at 20 years of age in 1991 i uh i wrapped it up with chili peppers give it away so good so good and i just, forgot how good that video is it's uh 
you know, I, I've wanted to be painted sparkly silver. Uh, I couldn't pull off the outfits, but uh, <laughs> um, I'm surprised that wants to the, see. The, the editor must have done some magic because I'm sure there are some angles that, uh, <laughs> that would yeah, have got them banned yeah. from Expo 86, let's put it that way. <laughs> you get to see more of Anthony than most people might might want to but uh, that is pure chili peppers i think at their absolute zenith was yeah. was that and it probably would have been uh not too soon before not too maybe um before that where uh i caught the chili peppers at the concert hall uh masonic temple uh, concert hall in toronto and and it is in my top five sweatiest hottest shows most crowded of all time and uh, Flea and Anthony were wearing, were wearing uh, uh, gold lame go-go shorts. Anthony was wearing matching sort of long opera gloves. And it was just, it was absolutely, it was, a, it, I think, I, I wish there was another show this week because I lost about 20 pounds in that show alone. <laughs> well, it, it was one just, of the... It was one of the most, as you know, my favorite venue in Toronto, like one of my favorite venues of all time. So there couldn't be a better place to see them. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was obviously pre-stadium, but, but right in the wheelhouse where, where it was a big deal and, and yeah. they were a big deal and they stepped up 100%. And, uh, and I just remember never being hotter, sweatier or, or happier. I mean, in that, in that holy trinity of fun, it was just perfect. Great show. Are we going to are we going to be allowed to be sweaty like that um, um, amongst other people? My God, Maybe in the great great province of British Columbia, I can't see it happening in Ontario anytime soon. But I got to be honest with you, I don't think I've been at a hot sweaty show because nobody wants to be standing in close proximity to a sweaty fifty seven year old man in that demographic. <laughs> well, one of like, I remember one of my sweatiest shows was um, in Ottawa. I was there, there with Jock and a few other people, outdoor at Lansdowne before it was Frank Clair Stadium. Mm -hmm. And the lineup was Daniel Lanois, Hot House Flowers, wow. Midnight Oil, and The Hip. August night, super muggy, disgusting. And as soon as The Hip played their final encore, it rained for 15 minutes and it was the best feeling in the world. It was so good. <laughs> That's heaven sent. Absolutely. So <laughs> you don't get that, you don't get that shower inside the Masonic temple, you know, right. you're hoping to walk out with like a rainstorm, but geez. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was one of the sweatiest ones, but I can imagine I would be twice as sweaty in that Masonic temple. Oh, there's yeah. not, a, there isn't a window to crack there. I don't think. No, no, there was, there was zero air handling uh, in, in, <laughs> no. in the temple. All right, my friend, we will. Uh, hey, thank you. Thanks, Brad. Yeah. Hey, um, well, thanks for thanks for tuning in. And, and if you made it to the end and all of our silly talk about music and and things had nothing to do with the show, then uh, congratulations. And uh, we'll see you next week. Um, we have Elizabeth on uh, our first California woman. So uh, that'll be fun. So, yeah, get out there and uh, support your local record store. And we'll see you next week.